small business accounts for 70% of private sector employment and makes up more than 99% of all businesses in Canada. In 2010, the government of the day released the paperwork study. The study looked at the paperwork costs borne by Canadian businesses in 2005, and then three years later in 2008. During that time, paperwork costs increased by 29% on average. These costs went up for all sizes of business, except the very largest. For our largest businesses, paperwork costs declined by 13%. The point is, for governments, bureaucrats, and our business schools, small business is almost invisible. They don't get it. At the hatchery, we're all about small business. We train and support accounting technicians to help small businesses with their paperwork costs. The chances of success for a startup looking to scale are very small. At The Hatchery, we believe in risk mitigation for businesses looking to grow. After all, the largest international consultants and the big four auditors don't tell their largest clients to innovate or die. Instead, they offer risk management services to help reduce risk. These large consultancy firms have no interest in small, early stage companies. Small companies can't afford their fees. At The Hatchery, we've developed size appropriate strategies that work for our small business clients. The truth is that even small businesses that self select as growth businesses are probably fooling themselves. That isn't very surprising. As a society, we lionize successful entrepreneurs. That fits with our mythology around progress and innovate or die. But most small businesses are lifestyle businesses, and their owners aren't entrepreneurs. While using a French word may add a certain cachet, it usually isn't appropriate. As entrepreneurship guru, Steve Blank has started saying recently, the chances of success for a technology startup looking to scale are infinitesimally small. In his 2019 book Good Enough, Israeli philosopher Daniel Milo argues provocatively that the theory of evolution through natural selection has acquired the trappings of an ethical system. Optimization, competitiveness, and innovation have become the watchwords of Western societies, yet their role in human lives as in the rest of nature is dangerously overrated. Imperfection is not just good enough, it may at times be essential to survival. Successful entrepreneurs are glorified in our Western society. Competition, use it or lose it, survival of the fittest, no free lunches, laws of the jungle with these and other buzzwords, neo-Darwinism and neoliberalism promote the tragic image of selfish organisms, including humans, constantly on the brink of extinction. In this view, every environment is hostile, and survival is the reward of whoever outcompetes all the other selfish organisms. Today's business schools would like us to believe that they have sequenced the genetic code of successful entrepreneurs. But management science is just another social science. Social scientists can invariably explain why things happened as they did. But, they aren't very good at predicting the future. Rather than going back to Darwin's survival of the fittest, we believe it's better to go back a little further, to the time of Hippocrates and the Hippocratic Oath. Like our medical counterparts, we need to resolve first to do no harm. Our clients need to preserve their cash while they develop their products, markets and business models. Only then should they consider looking for risk capital. According to one online source, there have been perhaps 19 successful unicorns in Canada as of March 2022. We don't like to brag since it's not the Canadian thing to do but our small CPA firm worked with two of them during their early years, while they struggled to survive. Our firm's role was helpful though perhaps not crucial. The founding teams had much more to do with their own success. We provided cost-effective tax compliance and helped deliver millions in tax incentives while they grew.